As always, we're going to start a new standard millimeter IPT. And once we get into here, we're going to start a sketch. And the, th the first thing I'm going to do is start my sketch on the XY plane just here. And of course, when you use the line tool, you do actually have the format. So I can change this rather than being sketch geometry, I can change it into a construction line or a center line. As we're going to be doing a revolve, I'm going to draw myself a center line. And I'm going to give that a length whilst I put it down of just 20 millimeters. The reason I'm going to use 20 millimeters is because that's the height of the flywheel rim that we're about to model. And as always in Inventor, we would like to keep our sketches as simple as possible. So to start with, I'm just going to do it very rough. And of course, I could dimension this as I'm going along, but just to show you that you don't need to make your sketches accurate to start with, I'm just going to do it very roughly. And you can actually see that by accident, I've left the centerline command on. Um, and that's not actually a problem because like everything else with Inventor, afterwards I can always edit it. So I'm going to select all of those lines there. So if I drag a box from right to left, you can see it goes green. Anything that I touch with that box will be selected. Whereas if I drag something from left to right, we get a red box. And it's only geometry which is completely consumed by this box, which is selected. So I'm just going to grab all of that. And you can see up here the format is a simple toggle on or off. So I'll turn it off and it goes back into normal sketch geometry. I'm now going to start to add the constraints and the dimensions to fully constrain our sketch before I do the revolution. So as we know, I need to dimension this one here, which is 20 millimeters. There are a couple of ways of doing this. I could always reference this dimension here. I could make maybe this line equal with the center line. But for clarity, I'm just going to add the 20 millimeters in there and we also know that this dimension here is eight millimeters obviously i'm getting these dimensions off the drawings which are all of also available to you i now need to align my sketch with the center line just to keep it around the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a horizontal constraint i'm going to select the midpoint of my center line and i'm also going to select the midpoint of my outside line which is just here and you can see it goes green when i go over it that's the midpoint when I do that, it's going to align the two. And as you can see, I've got some geometry which has now gone blue, which means it's fully constrained. And looking down on the status bar, I know there's three dimensions needed. And obviously, we know what they are. They're basically the diameters of everything here. So the good thing about Inventor is because I've told it that this is a center line, now if I add a dimension between, say, this line here and the center line, rather than giving me a linear dimension, it actually gives me a diameter that you can see down there. And when I place this down, I now don't need to do any maths because I know that my diameter here is 88 millimeters. And then I can add this one. And then we're going to carry on using the dimension tool. As we know, this one here is 90 millimeters, which is the inside face. And the final one we're going to do is the outside diameter, which is 100 millimeters. I'm just going to do is zoom all and you can now see we have our profile which is ready for revolving I could of course go up here and click finish sketch and then it would bring me into my 3d model tab where I could hit the revolve tool but as I know the hotkeys are I'm going to press that right away in the sketch and it's going to bring up the revolve function for me I'm just going to do a zoom all there by double clicking the either the roller wheel or of course if you've got um, the keys on your keyboard I've just double tapped the middle bit which is the same as the roller wheel and the beauty of inventor is because I told it that this was a center line, it's already picked that up as the axis, and we only have one possible closed profile, so it's picked that up automatically as well. So all that's left for me to do is actually hit OK. Now you can see we've got the basis there of straight away of our, um, our flywheel rim, and now all we have to do is actually just add the chamfers. So from the drawing, we know that there's basically a one mil typical chamfer on all of the edges except for this rim in the, on the inside. So I'm going to hit the chamfer tool, or you could do Control shift and K to bring up the chamfer tool. Uh, we just need to change that distance to 1mm, and then I need to start selecting the edges so I can do all four at once. And then get all of them. Now I'm just going to hit Apply. And that is our modelling done. So I'm just going to push F6 there to go back to my home view. So I now need to, of course, add the material. So we can go up into here and add it in here. Alternatively, we can go into the eye properties here and into the physical tab. 
As you know, this one is also stainless steel, so I'm going to go into here and then select stainless steel. I'm going to apply that, close the box, and I'm now going to save this part. So as as we know, because of our inventor project, it's gone right into the World Skills, World Skills Regional Example folder, and I'm now just going to put in flywheel rim and hit save. And that is another part modelled.